Maybe. Yeah. Like right now, I wanna. Really? Why is he interested in that? I wanna hear, babe. Come on, come on. I want you to tell me about um, tell me about Boston. Cause you were saying 35 years ago, when we lived in Boston, it, it was, was a, a lot very different. It was very difficult for African Americans. Really? And uh, when I moved there in 1984, mm -hmm. uh, when I was trying to find an apartment, mm -hmm. and they, I will never forget, uh, I was talking to one landlord who was white, and they said, what kind of name is Marita? <laughs> as though if I was Spanish or Hispanic they wouldn't want to rent to me um, <laughs> taxi drivers wouldn't take you into certain parts of the black community if you went to the to Fenway Park to see a baseball game uh, white people would I was told would, would throw beer cans at you uh, there was a part of the city where Irish people lived. It was called South Boston. Mm -hmm. And this was where a lot of the busing had mm -hmm. taken the, the, the uh, busing took place in the late 70s and early 80s. And it was a lot of resistance. And it was routinely known that if you were African American, you could not be caught in Southie, which is what it was called. And there was a very famous or rather infamous incident where several young black teenagers were for some reason in South Boston and a group of white teenagers chased them out of the neighborhood and the boys were crossing the subway tracks and one of them was hit by a subway train and paralyzed from the neck down. And that incident really galvanized the city and sort of symbolized the racial atmosphere. And it was also not just in, between African-Americans and whites, but ethnicities. For example, if you were white, but you weren't Italian, if you wanted to move into the North End, which is Italian, that you couldn't, the only Italians could live there. Now, as I told you, I met a friend, uh, went to an event and met a young African-American woman recently who loved living in Boston because a lot of that racial antagonism has um, changed. So I was very glad to hear that. But my memories of living in Boston in the 80s are not particularly positive. So what year did you, when you, when we, when you came from Africa, what year was that? 1980. You were born in 80. You were born in... 78. You were born in 78. So it would have been 79. So 79, you came to America with me. And you moved to Boston. Why did you move to Boston if you're from D.C.? Well, because there were a lot of schools there. There were a lot of universities. I mean, there were a lot of universities here, too. But um, I was kind of tired of D.C. And I had met some people in Nigeria who lived in Boston and um, wanted to start over somewhere new and Boston's a big town for education colleges and I was a university professor so I thought I'd start over there mm -hmm. and in you thought of Boston you thought of the Kennedys you thought of liberalism right you didn't realize that Boston was a basically in those days, anyway, a white working class town mm -hmm. that had, that was separated into neighborhoods and that there was a lot of antagonism between blacks and whites. That's not the, the public image of Boston that people had. But Boston seemed like a very liberal place, democratic haven, because it's like a democratic stronghold. Well, it is. It is. And the two can, the two can exist side to side. So they love, so, 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 so. Demo but Democrats haven't always been like for black people, right? No, the roots of the Democratic Party were in the, uh, the in the South, a party that was actually opposed to anything that hinted of black progress. The Republican Party, uh, founded by Abraham Lincoln and several others, was 
the party that actually was more progressive on, in terms of African Americans. But the Democratic Party was a party of slavery and um, up until the election of Franklin Roosevelt was identified by black people as a party solidly against our interests. So now this, so now you moved to Boston. And what's, where did you work at when you moved to Boston? Well, first I taught at Roxbury Community College, which was a community college in the heart of Roxbury, the black community. And like all black communities, this was a community that was that was designed as black. That is, when blacks migrated to Boston and they began moving into Dorchester and Roxbury, whites moved out. <laughs> um, so Roxbury Community College was a community college that had a lot of African-American and immigrant population. And I really enjoyed teaching there. Uh, then I went to Emerson College, which is a private university on the other side of town. Very different in terms of its student population, mostly white. Uh, and I taught journalism there. So Boston was in many ways a, a great place because there's a lot of culture, a lot of education, educational facilities. Um, but the weather is horrendous. And um, I didn't like, I, did, I just knew that I could not raise my son in a city where there's a part of that city that he dare not go into at the risk of his life. I always knew that we were going to leave Boston. That was... So good. now when we lived in Boston, we lived in the piano factory. Well, the piano factory was a building uh, that at that time was a large building set aside for artists. So if you were a dancer, a singer, a painter, a musician, a photographer, this was a building where you could get a really nice working an apartment that would allow you working space uh, for a subsidized rent. So it was a very uh, attractive building in the heart of downtown Boston in the South End. And uh, we lived there after moving from, from Mattapan. And once again, to talk about the racial atmosphere at that time, the building had not rented to any to very many African American artists. So there was a suit. African Americans had sued uh, to force the building to start renting to black people. And it was around that time that I applied and we got an apartment, a loft apartment. So it was a beautiful building, a great place to raise kids and uh, felt good about that. Yeah. Now my little playmates back then were white, so it's like I didn't know that it was a racist town. Right, and uh, the part we, we, the irony is that. Hold on. Hey, nothing. What are you doing? Oh, okay. Um, okay, well, just call me when you get there. I need to talk to you about something. Bye. Hey. Go ahead. What was your question? So, so, there was a, so, so, yeah, I didn't know it was racist, a racist place. Oh, yeah, and I think that the South End where we lived had whites, blacks, and Hispanics. It was the one part of the city that actually was fairly integrated. Most of the rest of the city was black, either black or white or, or, or Italian or Irish. But the part of the city that we spent most of our time living there in was, was integrated. Mm -hmm. And you had Spanish, white, black. And so you grew up in a pretty integrated setting. Wow, that's crazy. So what, so you said you didn't think you could raise kids in Boston. So what made you And then I brought you back to D.C. 
in time to see <laughs> Marion Barry put in jail. <laughs> I moved back to Washington because I, I did, as I said, I didn't want to raise you in a place where there was a part of the city that you would get killed in. And then you moved me back to the city where everywhere you get killed in. <laughs> That's not true. Brought you back to a city. I thought you would see more black people in positions of power. So and now authority, which you did in DC. So now, so now, um, the DC that you left. Well, how was it different than the DC we came back to? Well, um, Marion. And what Barry, year is this? What year is this? Like seventy nine, and we came back in eighty four. Came back to DC in eighty four. Okay. Yeah. So Marion Barry was was mayor, and it was a time where there was a lot of a sense of black power, um, black opportunity. But at the same time, it was pretty well known that the mayor himself had a lot of personal problems and some problems with corruption that potentially endangered his uh, his his mayor mayoralty. So it was a it was comp, it was contradiction. Like a lot of things are contradiction. On the one hand, bringing you back to D.C., you saw a city that has the that has the highest number of educated black people of any city probably in America, but at the same time, has the highest number of crackheads. has, has um, a big <laughs> problem with illiteracy and crime among a lot of black people. And so then, the then, yeah, then at that time, yeah. Well, still today. But I, I mean, mean, at that time, it was really, really, really wor way worse than it now. Like, we had 400, 500 murders oh, a yeah, year. Oh, yeah, that was, yeah. Now you have, like, 120, yeah. 150, like, yeah. it, it was. It, it, it's not like it was back then. So you didn't. You didn't know it was going to be like that when you came back. I didn't care. Um, the fact was that I didn't want to live in in, in Boston. There were, mm -hmm. I just didn't want to live in Boston. Mm -hmm. That you would see, even despite those things you're talking about, mm -hmm. you would still see more African Americans in positions of power and authority in D.C. And that was important to me. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, if you got shot in a neighborhood, it wouldn't be because you were black. It would be because you were being robbed or something like that. But it wouldn't be because specifically you were black. You were targeted because of your race. So. Okay. So yeah. So yeah. That's that's crazy, man. Wow. So yeah. This is episode one. Rapping with my mom. <laughs> yeah, guys. Hope y'all guys enjoyed it. I'm going to see how many, how many views this one get. <laughs>